Farewell salutations, kindred spirits, greetings, and welcome back to another magic history lesson. Yeah, it's been a few weeks since we've done one of these, and hey, I've got a good one for you today, as we're going to be talking about a living legend. Yep, living legend. This man has authored over a dozen hardcover books for the magic community. He published one of the longest-running magic publications, one of the trade journal zines, The Apocalypse. Also, uh, author of dozens of magic teaching videos, DVDs, and VHS tapes. So if that's your jam, that's available. And probably more importantly to the majority of the world, this man, Harry Lorraine, also published the memory book. As he is well known as a memory expert, this is really this man's forte. And let's start here. If I had to recommend anything to my viewers from of the magic world from this man, I'm probably going to recommend his memory works. Not always the common recommendation, but hey, learning these techniques, even if it's just to remember names and faces, these are gonna be some of the most valuable techniques in your bag of tricks as a working professional. So if you do have intent to either do perform magic a lot in your life or certainly to work as a pro, you're gonna to wanna to check out some memory technique work and <clears throat> Harry Lorraine's a great place to start. So that's where we'll start our recommendations. And then <clears throat> we'll take a, a trip down memory lane and, and start where I started. This man, Harry Lorraine, opened my eyes to the wonderful world of close-up sleight-of-hand magic over 40 years ago. I was 12 years old. I was in a mall in Dothan, Alabama. I wandered into a bookstore where I found a book called The Magic Book. It had a $5 sticker on it, and that was exactly my allowance back in those days. So I emptied my pockets to buy this book, and uh, by the end of that day, my my brain was enlightened and let me i'm gonna just briefly touch on one of the things that harry teaches that kind of opened my eyes i'm thinking this and let me kind of demonstrate it as i as i do this this is shuffling the deck right well when i was 12 years old and i read harry's instructions for how to shuffle a deck and keep control of even one card or maybe the four aces this opened my eyes to like some of the wonderful things that you could do with magic Prior to this book, which I had read other books, I'd read some uh, Bill Tarr's classic, classic magic tricks and some library books, but it was Harry who would make me understand that I could control the cards through finger techniques. And I'm just gonna briefly talk about what I'm doing here. Now this is an overhand style shuffle. This is a pretty common shuffle. And if you're not familiar with this, you're gonna wanna learn that and come back to this shuffle technique. But here's what, this is the jog shuffle. The jog shuffle starts by using your thumb to in jog, that's an in jog, pull one card towards yourself. So I've in jogged one card, and then I'll shuffle the rest of the deck in this procedure, which will allow me to claim this position, either by a cut of the deck, I could lift up with my thumb and cut the deck at that point, or I could run a jog and then shuffle off and then pick up that jog with my thumb here and continue another shuffle. It's a great way to control a, a block of cards on top of the deck, or, or maybe this. Maybe you can just control one selection. So, so say someone has picked the Ace of Diamonds, you have them place their card back, and then as you apparently shuffle to lose it in the deck, you just do that jog, in jog, shuffle off, and then claim the, claim the in jog, either cut or shuffle to get that card right back to the top. And, that's the jog shuffle, which uh, Harry opened my eyes to so many mo moons ago. This is an important book in my opinion, and I was browsing Amazon yesterday. It's still available for less than 20 bucks. So hey, if you're one of my beginner viewers who maybe hasn't uh, obtained a library of magic books, or if you're looking for a good beginner book to get started, search on Amazon or Google it up. Do yourself a favor and check out the memory book. Uh, not, well, check out the memory book also check out the magic book magic book very important in my life <clears throat> it, while i'm talking about harry lorraine, lorraine books that are important in my life i gotta mention the second book of his that i would buy and this would be several years later i would discover this book in haynes house of cards in cincinnati ohio wonderful magic shop they're still there if you're in the cincinnati area go spend some money at haynes house of cards they got a great selection thank me later you'll enjoy the time you spent there but 
Uh, I used to frequent the shop every week when I was a youngster. One of the first books I bought was Harry Lorraine's My Favorite Card Tricks. I'm thinking, Harry Lorraine, I learned a lot from him. I'm seeing this book, he calls it My Favorite Card Tricks, and well, maybe I'll find a card trick that's my favorite. Plus, it was a cheap book. It was like five bucks for a little manuscript, so it was in my price, price point as a young magician, and I was right. I learned a few things from there. I'm going to show you one of them now. In fact, I'm going to teach you one of the routines that I do as I do it. I don't want to teach Harry's stuff exactly, but we'll talk about what he does. And uh, I'll also mention one of the tricks in my favorite card tricks. One of the tricks called Color Coincidence would inspire the Chameleon Sandwich. Now the Chameleon Sandwich is one of my routines. I'll leave a link up here. You can go click on that. It's, I won't tell you what it is if you haven't seen it. Know this, it's a killer, it's attainable, and we're gonna thank Harry Lorraine again for making that, uh, it was kind of a creative introduction to this genre of card magic that opened some new opportunities. And well, if you wanna learn more about it, you'll have to go look at the Chameleon Sandwich uh, tutorial. So go check that out if you like card magic. And now why don't we just do this? Let's take a look at uh, the card trick that I'm gonna teach you. We're gonna zoom down the close up and take a look at Harry's one-eyed Jack Sandwich. Let's do it. All right, so yeah, this is the mystery of the one-eyed jack sandwich. As such, you'll need the one-eyed jacks. We'll also need the card you picked before you took the one you chose. Yep, we'll need that one. To do that, you have your spectator touch any card in the deck. So they touch a card and it goes between the one-eyed jacks, hence the one-eyed jack sandwich. And this situation will just rest inside the deck as you ask your spectator to choose another card. A lot of ways you can do this. I just riffle down the thumb until they say stop. Wherever they stop, they get a choice. Any one of those is fine, but we'll just use this card, which is, oh, wow, that's an interesting selection, the three of clubs. Yeah, that happens to also be the card you picked before you took the one you chose. Yeah, that's right. Look, in between these two jacks, one and only one card between them in this regular deck, and yep, that's your card. The One-Eyed Jack Sandwich. So yeah, not too shabby, right? This is a pretty good trick and uh, attainable. It also it uses some simple techniques that are great for a, a novice, or also has some advanced concepts that are good for an advanced student too. So let's just walk through it. I'll tell you, I'm not gonna tell you exactly how Harry does it, and I'll tell you what when I get to that, but let's tell you for the most part how Harry does it and some of the things that I do uh, that Harry maybe doesn't recommend. So start with a couple of sandwich cards. Harry used the one-eyed jacks. I can't imagine why you would use that in the real world. They're just nonsensical. So my first choice here, I'm gonna say use the two jokers. It just kind of makes sense for this trick. And then when you have your spectator pick the card they picked before they took the one they chose, you, uh, you, Harry, I think, would just put a card there. He'd go, look, we'll put one there before we start. I have the spectator pick the card. Or even better, if you can involve multiple spectators to do this. However you do it, one card is placed between your two sandwich cards. And then we're going to use a double undercut to apparently lose this situation into the deck. But in reality, the double undercut is just going to move that top joker to the bottom. So... Uh, let me just walk through this briefly for those of you that don't know what a double undercut is. This move was popularized by Di Vernon, the, the professor. And what happens is I place this three card sandwich atop the pack. And as I square the sandwich, I get a little pinky break uh, uh, under the uppermost joker. So I'm holding a secret separation. And then as I do three cuts to lose the jokers, I'm actually just cutting that one card to the bottom. So I start by undercutting half of the deck. It goes on top of the joker, and then I hold that break with my thumb. So yeah, the, so yeah, the, th the, the, the little finger holds the break to start with. The thumb claims that break as you start the cutting procedure. That's undercut number one. Your thumb holds the break. Now undercut about half of the bottom pack below the break, and then cut the remaining remaining the remainder to the top. And that's gonna shuttle your single joker to the bottom via the double undercut. Valuable move, you'll wanna learn that. 
All right, so to do the trick, the main part of the trick, you have your spectator pick any card. Harry would riffle down the pack and have them stick their finger in. That's fine, it works. I like to use my thumb just to kind of conceal the fact that the uh, indexes aren't showing. And it's kind of a discrepancy because there should be face-up cards in the deck. So you don't want a big gap showing in the front. Make sense? I hope it makes sense. I'm going to keep going. So you, you riffle down your thumb until someone says stop. Wherever they stop, stop at that exact point, clearly separate, and then offer them a couple cards from that position. It doesn't matter which card they pick, that card goes to the table. You know, say they wanted this one, that's fine. That goes to the table. And then you drop the remainder of the deck on top. That face down joker is right there. You drop the remainder of the deck on top, and then you turn the deck over as you say, oh, that's an interesting card. It's kind of like the card we picked before you took the one you chose. As you're saying these words, we're going to get ready for, I'll tell you what this is. This is a substitute for Harry Lorraine's Halo Cut. Halo Cut is a, is a classic Harry technique. I'm really not in a place to teach it on this channel. I don't think it's appropriate. You want to learn the Halo Cut, go look up, uh, well, was, I think it was originally in Rim Shots, Harry's book. Go check that book out, but it is taught on a lot of places. It's uh, technically a slip cut from the bottom. And with one card and one cut, here's how I prefer to do this anyway. I get a little finger break, and I do this by pulling down with my pinky on the bottom card of the deck. So using your pinky, do a pinky pull down of the bottom card. That's to get a separation between it and the rest of the deck. Now we're going to come with a thumb and claim that separation. So we have a thumb break. This is in preparation for a swing cut, which is a cut we discussed last week. Remember the swing cut or the swivel cut? So what's going to happen is I execute that swing cut into the other hand. I'm going to slip or pull or, uh, and, or halo move this card along with the cut portion going into the other hand. So uh, in, in one sentence, I'm executing a slip cut of the bottom card of the deck as I do a kick cut. So, the thumb break is at the back, the forefinger kicks the packet into the other hand, as it does the pinky pulls and slides that card with the original top half. It should just look like you're cutting the card into the deck. I mean, done at speed, it looks like this. Oh, you picked the two of spades? Yeah, that's the card that you picked before you took the one you chose. Yeah, and then to conclude the effect, just ribbon spread the deck. You'll find the two face-up mates together with one card in between them. And yeah, that's going to be the card you picked before you took the one you chose. <laughs> and that is the one-eyed Jack sandwich. Altered, but basically that's it. If you want the original, go get that uh, My Favorite Card Trick book. Check it out. It's a good book. You'll like it. So yeah, that was a worker for me for at least a year, maybe a couple of years. I think this trick still holds water today. It's a fun piece that I'm sure a, a beginner sleight of hand card man will enjoy. So enjoy that. And maybe maybe we could t take a look at another Harry Lorraine trick. I'm not going to explain this one, but it's a classic piece of his that uses a similar move. Let me do it for you real quick. I'll give you some tidbits on where you can find the juice, the work, and uh, we'll do that now. Take a look at Harry Lorraine's Halo Aces. So yeah, once you learn the jog shuffle to maintain a block, and then you learn how to do the uh, halo cut or the bottom slip cut, you'll be able to do this wonderful routine of Harry's where a couple of packs are cut and then someone says where to stop shuffling and you find all four aces. Sure, it's actually no problem with those techniques. If you want, want the work on this from Harry, it's called the Halo Aces, and again, this one was published in Rim Shots, but just a stock on the top, a couple of bottom slip cuts, and you can get this result as well. All right, so that's Halo Aces, which was originally published in Rim Shots, one of Harry's great books, although this thing has been republished in a few places, including some of his video offerings. A little Googling, and maybe search the YouTube, you can find the uh, handling for that trick Go get busy and check that out. Halo Aces, it's a winner. Let's, let's do this. We'll talk about some of the other books, like Rim Shots, that Harry published. As mentioned earlier, he authored The Apocalypse. You want some fun work? Get yourself some of these books. Each volume has uh, five years of uh, 
com compiled magazines. Or this was a this was a journal that you got in, uh, of close-up magic from the I guess it was the 80s through the 90s. Harry would compile uh, contributions from the top magicians of the time and then offer them in this monthly magazine. And wow, it's just chock full of some great stuff in there. Heck, volume one has one of my all time favorite tricks in it. David Roth's original Chinese coin assembly. If you just read trick one from volume one, you've got your money's worth right there in my opinion. So that's a great one. And yeah, and yeah, that's one of the things Harry did was publish other magicians work through his life. Uh, I recall reading uh, his Ken Krenzel book. Here's one. I recall reading Star Quality, The Magic of David Regal. This, if I'm not mistaken, was published in the late 80s and uh, just shows a wonderful eye that Harry had for uh, picking up on talent and guys that has the right stuff as the case may be. David Regal certainly has that. If I, I'm thinking here, here's what I'm thinking. If I had to recommend one magic book of Harry Lorraine's, and we've already talked about the memory book and the magic book, but say you've done a few things in magic, you're ready for a, a good Harry Lorraine book, what would I recommend? Well, I gotta start with close-up card magic. This was uh, Harry's, it's really a beginner's text, although there's quite a bit of advanced stuff, lots of great intermediate work in there. So Harry Lorraine's close-up card magic will introduce a student to some of the basic techniques like double lifts and, uh, you know, false shuffles and such. But then he's got some advanced work as well. Uh, you'll find things like Harry's ambitious card routine. Again, a piece of magic worth the price of the book. His uh, wonderful out of this universe, I think, is in there. I'm pretty sure that one's in there. That's a killer. Uh, lots of gems in close-up card magic. That's uh, one of Harry's classic earlier it's one of his earlier texts as we speak as i say these words know this harry at 95 95 years of age is still publishing he's still actively writing and he's one of his more recent works is highly recommended from the fraternity this book is jaw droppers so what harry's been doing the last five or ten years i guess has been reworking republishing the older books uh, rewriting, clarifying, adding enhancements, and uh, this book, Jaw Droppers, will be much like that. So you'll get kind of the best of the best of. It's like 52 tricks in this thing. So maybe I'll leave a link in the description if you're interested in some current Harry Lorraine. Well, that's going to get my suggestion there. And that's our uh, that's our talk about Harry Lorraine, our magic history lesson for the day. Hey, Harry, I know you're still out there. If you happen to be watching this, please accept this open thanks from this young magician who you uh, influenced so many moons ago. Your clear writing style and uh, uh, enthusiasm about the art just reached right through the page and grabbed my gray matter. And uh, I still enjoy your writings today. In fact, once I'm done shooting this video, I'm going to go open the apocalypse and learn a, a trick I haven't done, maybe ever, and we'll share that with you guys on the short forms or maybe maybe later this week on the live. So that's my plan today, and uh, I'm going to go get busy, first of all, editing this footage I'm shooting so you can watch it later. We'll do that next, and then I'm going to go read some Harry Lorraine. I hope you guys enjoyed the uh, episode. Thank you for watching. As always, I appreciate your time, attention, and energy, and that's going to be a wrap. We'll see you on the next one. Ciao for now.